This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. There we are. Happy Wednesday, buddy. It's great to see you, buddy. Dude, how good was Tulsi Gabbard? The best. She's awesome. You want to be her security detail? I would, yeah. Yeah. I'll take a bullet for her. Yeah. I'll be her Kevin Costner. <laughs> She'll be my Whitney. <laughs> She's great. Whitney Houston. She's dude, hey, dude, person. but dude, I know we had Tulsi here, but don't treat me different, dude. Don't treat me any different. Well, what do you mean? Dude, I'm, I'm just... Whatever. A normal guy. Whatever do you I'm mean? I'm a normal guy, dude. Did you go viral again? No, well, <laughs> typically week to week I do. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yeah. But I'm on a magazine cover. Dude. You're on a magazine cover? <laughs> yeah, bro. Bring this don't up. Why don't I know about different. this? <laughs> Let me see this. I'm going to get... Magazine subscriptions are still very is big. It, I read magazines. Is it man? Is it man, man? What is it? What is it? Oh, I'm, I'm a plus size model. trucks. I'm a plus size model now. Dude, I wish your shirt was off. Can I ask you a question? Could they have done a better that. job with their Photoshop of having you in the truck? It looks like you're, you've been Photoshopped against that. No, go it's a whole photo that. shoot. Go back um, that's that. me leaning on my truck. It's a uh, reel, so I can't really it. Uh, yeah. That's great, dude. That's the lightning with the new paint job. That's the lightning. Well, now, what, what would they Still call in the that? shop. Not going to lie to you guys. Back in the shop. Oh, it is? Well, too much power on that thing oh, causes some power. issues. So we're figuring it out. Okay. Full Throttle Customs is going to do their thing. Blue Oval. That's pretty cool. Street Fighter. And, and there you are. Why didn't you get yourself into a pair of uh, sh hot shorts and, and drape over the fucking hood? Did they no, I should have dressed like I do uh, when I was in high school. I would have had you eat a banana slowly. Oh. You know what I mean? That's racist. Draped over the... Uh, no, it's, it's homosexual. <laughs> mm, kind of, right? Eat a banana. Over the barrel of bananas. No, oh, we'd like to see you sprint around the, the car. That's the last thing I was thinking of. Well, you, we want to see you explode. I, I, you're so athletic. No, that's the last Bananas, thing. I was, athletic. I was saying you'd lie on the thing in hot shorts eating a banana. That's suggestive. Oh, I got you. Right. I don't know these days. Uh, but don't treat me any different, dude. Be on front of a magazine's pretty big deal, man. I've been truck. sitting on this for a while, dude. Street, street truck. truck. It's different now. Things are, are you different. the guy on the cover of Street Truck? Oh my God, yes, I am, bro. Yeah, dude. you're leaning against the the lightning that's, that's in the me. shop. That's me, dude. And you're you're the other guy with your one foot out of the yeah. passenger door. That's me, dude. I know, dude. Don't Street Truck. I know, dude. Things there, are different oh, now. Oh man, it almost looks like you're on two wheels, but you're actually on four wheels there. I know. I, things are different now, dude. I know. And you, I love that shot of just the car on a cliff. Well, yeah, we were in, uh, like, off Mulholland. Sure. And it was rainy as hell. I can see that. It was not the easy. ground's wet. It was not. And that car is on slicks. Dude, does not do well in the rain. The shoes match the truck. The you golden know goose. I, could, I wish I said that was intentional, but just... It just happened. It just things now, aligned, dude. Is there a name for that orange? Is it tangerine orange? Uh, Mopar calls that mango. Go, mango. Go mango. Mongo. I call it hot orange. Ah, hot orange. That's my little tangerine. Yeah, that bro. tangerine has some. It's my little tangerine. Issues. Just say it's your little mango. My little mango. I don't. I hate mango. You get in the. You do. Mango smells too. You don't like mango. Mango smells it's like best food I've ever had in my life. Oh, I don't like. My kids <gasps> like it too. I Mango's my favorite them. food. I don't trust. Really? Them. I don't trust anybody. Eating How mango. do you not like mango? It's just, it's just not my thing. I've never met anybody who doesn't like mango. Oh, you don't either? There's, there's, oh, no, there's I, a ton I agree of with us. them. Mangoes have a scent to them, what? and they're like, like furry. Yeah, what? Like bo. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so interesting. I'm, uh, that must be like the way I feel about cilantro. Some people just don't have. Why a do thing. You, Why do people hate cilantro? Do you, does it taste like soap to you? It's not soap. It just tastes like um. You know a stink you, bug. You know you ever smell a stink bug? That's See, what that, it tastes that's like. That's how mango I feel like is like that's that. So that weird bo smell. It just must be. Yeah. Must be a cut thing. I read there's like a genetic <laughs> thing with cilantro, though. This is no joke. You don't like cilantro and like salsa? I can't do it. This People is hate no, it? This is no joke. My father in the Philippines ate 50 mangoes. He ate 50 of them. He <laughs> ate 50. In a day? No, no, no. In a sitting. 50 mangoes. So bored, huh? Do you believe that story? No, that never happened, but we'll just, I like it for the show, right? I just realized Think that, how many that is. Well, I just realized it was told to me as a kid. I remembered it, <laughs> and, and it keeps there's on, no way on. it was 50. No. so many that, mangoes. You, I mean, nor could you. I mean, you'd be so sick. You'd be so freaking sick. I told you my dad did that to me. I tell you, I was, uh, he was with all his rich friends in Utah, and they'd been to my show, and ah, oh, and I'm at a party, and oh, Brian is charming, and I'm like, and another thing about this story, and another thing, and I'm telling the story, and I walk in, and the guy in their truck, and then there's like a giraffe, and I tell this whole story, ah, ah, ah and, they, and I just kind of crescendo it, they all laugh, my father, my father goes, 
Ah, great story. Now, how much of that story do you guys think is actually true? <laughs> yeah. like, you yeah. motherfucker. I would have done exactly what your dad you did. You son of a bitch. <laughs> done he would exactly be the guy like possible. that. I'd have an argument. I'd get heated up. I'd be like, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. and I, we'd have this argument, and it'd be in front of a bunch of people. And my father would go, wow, did you see how you sped up in the middle there? You saw how you sped up when you started talking about that part? You know what that means? You don't know about that part. No. You yeah. just sped up. He can just pick that shit yeah. up. I'd pull my hair out. I'd be like, fuck. Don't try. Don't debate with him. Don't debate. He'll find a way to, he'll just. Look Dude, I up. watched, uh, have you seen that doc? It's, I think it's, it's the number one doc on, it's not on Netflix, it's on HBO, Quiet on the Set, the Nickelodeon stuff. No, I can't watch that. Is it about child uh, molestation or some shit? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're like, yeah, the, the main kid, Drake, who got touched by one of the producers he's probably like 13 14 at the time maybe mm -hmm. but it is i mean you watch that you would never let your kid act like it just doesn't work child actors are just not good right it can't be good dude i was with my son who's very cute he's 12 years old and we were at um whole foods and uh i didn't tell you this and we're you know me and my son are just picking up stuff and this old dude just keeps on showing up down every aisle and just kind of looking at my son just kept looking and then that he he would strategically set it up so we were coming down this way and he'd come back around and be like whoops fancy seeing you guys here he wouldn't say that but he was just like your dad's was, spidey senses should dude go it off. was so clear that this guy was 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 a pedophile Did you guys kill so him? obvious Did you guys kill him I, I took his head off i actually uh I waited that's for him what they should do with pedophiles it well, should be zero tolerance i agree well like when you watch the that doc you should definitely watch. it's interesting yeah and it, it's just crazy how like Net, nickelodeon ignored so many red flags like they had three convicted like pedophiles on the set what yeah it was wild super wild and then the guy yeah. who molested drake the child actor he only got 16 months and then they show like the major like influential people in uh hollywood who wrote letters you know like trying to you know defend them and, and it's wild it is wild well, i got you know I and I speaking of that the reason the story with your son the spidey sense is drake's dad was like super hands-on yep and he knew he, he knew everything and he was i never left my son's sight a lot of these parents went there and they'd mingle yep. and he was i i was focused on my son because i know that world and right when he met that producer he told his son he's like be careful that guy is trouble so he 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 made sure he was never alone with them never alone that guy got in the middle of drake and his dad the relationship was like your dad's holding you back you'd be a bigger star blah 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 your dad really don't know how to manage you need a proper manager so drake's like all right well i better kick him out so then he gets rid of his dad he, he he like vilifies he his he dad. Didn't know. He, he didn't, didn't know. know. He was you know whatever 14, 13, 13. 12. Brain so he 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 fires his dad. The mom who they're divorced, who's like out to lunch. She's she he told her the dad told the mom too like don't uh, that's fine I won't be his manager. Do not leave him alone with this guy. The mom just was like whatever. He's just paranoid. The mom because she you know who knows working she whatever. Just Dude, she expect. would drop the kid off at that guy's house and be like can you take him to his auditions. Yep. Sure enough, homeboy well, you know, gets, because homeboy he apparently, gets apparently the dad was like, why is this adult taking such an interest in my son and calling all the time? It's like, there's something going on. And that, that's, a, that's a red flag. If but you're also, an adult and you're taking this active interest in a 13-year-old. But I told my girl, like, the whole, like, that guy's, like, one or two episodes in the Drake stuff. And they're doing a bonus episode coming out soon, too, a follow-up with Drake. But uh, the main uh, creator, of, he created, like, 10 hit shows. Like, he... He's just really good at that. I told my girl, I said, it should be a red flag if that grown man who's whatever at the time, 35, 40 years old, knows exactly what eight to 12 year olds want. Like ten, all you the think? time. You like think? that's a little weird. Of course. Little Unless weird. you're some like high level coach. I understand people work with children. They're great people. I'm but saying as far as 100%. like what they're into, like you're always have your, you, you your always have your ear to the you ground. Know. Your, you know, your spidey senses go off. And then it was a bummer because, you know, I grew up on Nickelodeon uh with double dare and all that shit but it's crazy to me that amanda Bynes, who's probably their biggest star obviously she, you know she's having issues now she's not that she wanted no part of the doc mm -hmm. but there's a lot of weird rumors there too weren't you saying that chin when you tell me like well there's no plus side right to that sometimes it's like i can see her people going there's nothing there's no plus to being involved but in she could take it all down because yeah. there's a rumor she mm -hmm. got impregnated 
by oh, okay. the guy who got it. She had an abortion when she was like 13. Oh, Jesus. That's the rumors. Oh, Jesus. I don't know, but it's what Well, all that stuff is wild. So, so when I was, I remember when I was, uh, what, I don't know, 11? There was a, I told you the story where I got touched. There yeah. was a camp counselor. Yeah, yeah. And this is how the 70s were, okay? So I'm, I'm like, something's wrong here. This guy's playing with my willy. Then I find out he sucked my friend's dick. And my friend was 11 or something. My friend was like, I don't want to tell anybody. And I go, bullshit. I go marching right to my mom. She was, I, I think I called her. She came to visit. I waited till she came to visit. And I said, hey, guess, guess what? This guy touched me. She goes to the camp director. The camp director brings me in and goes, now tell me what else happened. You want to know the details. I go, well, he was just grabbing, groping, and feeling me when I woke up. He, his hand was in my pants when I woke up, right? He would sleep. He, was the, he would take us on, on, on trips. And I was like, I knew something was up. Long story short, in the 70s, they went and told his wife. His wife. Instead of calling I, the cops? Because I stopped going on canoe trips. I stopped going on the trip so, because I was like, I, I knew he was going to do some shit to me. So I, I stopped. But I, that, to me, it was like, just avoid that guy. It's creepy. Ugh, he had a beard and he was just older and chubby. Just and a just, different oh, time, it just, yeah. It was just, so, so, when, so when they went and told the wife, she said, ah, he's up to that stuff again. And they, they didn't arrest him. They just had him move on. And that's what they used to do back then. They'd be like, you got to get out of here. And they would fire you. They but, wouldn't bring the cops. In yeah, it's time. a different time now because even back then, you know, you're talking early 2000s, like Drake and all that. And she's all that and all, all those shows. Damn. Uh, or all, just all that. She's all that's a movie. But you can see why the kids like Drake, he was massive. And Amanda Bynes and you know, Ariana Grande's on there. Mm. You can see why they didn't speak up because the kids... You know, Hollywood's so fickle that they're like, if I speak up, I'm 100%. not going to work again. I, that was, they, were, they were scared to when speak When I up. was in the business, I mean, when, when, when I first came out here for most of, uh, frankly, up until 2017, up until the Me Too revolution. But before that, you did not open your mouth. I'm that's, telling well, you. that's how because they because they'll, they'll tell you that you're never going to work again. Yeah, and you wouldn't. That's how and Harvey Weinstein got so far for so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, he was so powerful. So this is what I always say about the Me Too movement, which I of course have my problems with. But at the same time, I'm also a guy who's about fair play. And one of the things that I will say, and I know this because I boy caught a stray. You caught a stray. I caught a stray. It's okay. Yep. I, I but I will say this. I I I I grew up in this business. I not grew up, but I was I was in this business for 30 years. I've been in this business, and up until the Had Me a Too lot of success, yep, Had and your up, own show. yep, up until the Me Too revolution, there was a male whisper network. There was a male whisper network. So if a woman dared to complain about sexual harassment, being touched, any of that stuff, she knew whether you were a makeup person, she a producer, or director, you would never work. You'd never work again. I'm telling you. And for the first time in history, the one thing I'll give to the Me Too movement is that there was a suddenly a female network there's a way and to all those back. assholes and there were a lot of asshole dudes not there a lot are. The there, there still are still but all. they 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 all of a sudden had their power taken away mm. and now every one of those guys realized i may be really powerful but i'm gonna get fucked yep. if i behave like an asshole and that's what happened to people like les moonves and things like that you know because there were women that were like well you know this is what he did yep. that's what happened to steve Wynn. You, if you have enough women coming out and saying that stuff, there's got to be, where well, there's that much smoke, there's definitely fire. Mm -hmm. And, you know. What do you guys think? There's a theory that I've actually, I've looked into this. There's this theory that a lot of doctors, whatever you want to call them, physicians, think that you can cure pedophilia. No. Well, I don't know. They, they, what they think is it's a neurological thing, though, because yeah. a lot of pedophiles are left-handed. They found a lot of these things. Like So so it's, it's exactly like saying, okay, the serial killers probably have something going on with their brain sociopaths they know just don't feel anything mm -hmm. they, they so they one no of this, this woman just wrote she's a phd she's a psychiatrist she's a therapist and she wrote a she wrote an article and she said i'm a th i'm a sociopath I'm, I'm 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 an actual so sociopath and psychopath and sociopath same thing they're interchangeable so some sociopaths are sadists as well but here's what happens with the sociopath she said she couldn't feel anything she did, and, and, and it was unbearable because you have this void of nothingness. And as a kid, the pressure would build up so much that she'd have to do something to get, to get some kind of feeling. She needed to get some danger. So she would steal shit. And then when she would steal shit, her mother found out she had stolen all this stuff. And her mother said, you can't do this. And she said, think about the other people. And it never resonated. She goes, I can't. It doesn't, doesn't make me feel bad. I didn't feel shame mm -hmm. and I didn't feel bad for other people. And she still feels that way. 
She doesn't. She still feels that way. Now, she doesn't want to, but then she would also get this feeling. Like she was sitting in behind the girl and she goes, I just want to do something violent, like pull her hair, stab her with a pencil, because I needed to release this pressure. So what? What? So so they, they've caught serial killers. This one serial killer is a cannibal. Horrible. He's a cannibal. You know what they found? He had pins. He put pins in his balls and asshole because so he feel? needed something to feel. So oh. that 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 how fucked up is that? So I think. So, but but I, what I'm trying to say is that you can find reasons. I'm sure there are neurological reasons for why a pedophile is a pedophile. Serial killer, is a serial killer. It doesn't mean you 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 can walk around now. You know you got to be put away now. Maybe put away, but if you can, if you could figure out a way to change their brain, if you could try to figure a way to, to cure their brain where they could feel, where they no longer had this 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 impulse or this overwhelming desire to touch children and do and rape children, now we can. The, okay, science might be able to cure. I, th I think a disease. A, a, like a lot of serial killers, it's their upbringing too, or like a lot of pedophiles were molested when they were young kids. Like it's so I don't know. So they don't know about that. So that's the other thing that's interesting. A lot, a, lot, a lot of serial killers trauma at the a right lot, time a lot of trauma yeah. uh yeah the household yeah. there's a lot of it trauma. might be like a combination they all, they all have a reoccurring theme there most yeah. serial killers do yeah might be a, a combination of things you know where you get they get off on the the torture of someone they get i feel off like when you figure out more stuff to solve than serial killers and pedophiles i mean it's a problem but it's you know it's not like non-stop yeah like there's some other shit we should figure out first. i think pedophilia and is is way worse it's way more than we can bear like actually, yeah, pedophilia is a bigger problem than serial killers yeah. for sure yeah 100 percent. and and we probably all know we know one we, we oh, probably all know somebody in our lives we don't but that their biggest oh, secret is that them. they have that oh you're saying yeah i mean you, you then they there, there is secret? probably yeah there's probably one among us always that has this impulse that is now some people have it and they just they never act on it because they realize it that's just not acceptable so they keep it to themselves there's different uh, therapies too right they, there's like hormone therapy they'll do with some like pedophilia it's like well, they so, suppress so one of the, their one sexual of, drive yeah so stuff. one of the reasons that the, the new academia is about minor attracted persons you know this fucking try not to maps make them villains it, the idea is that if, if you want to get pedophiles to get help they can't talk to a therapist because the minute they tell a therapist they have that, the therapist is op is must true. tell the police. So, so you get arrested. So they don't have anywhere to turn. So the theory is if you allow them to actually get help and talk to somebody without having to go to jail, then maybe you'd stop them from doing that. I also think some of those pedophiles and obviously the, you know, the big kind of sex trafficking of children, like that whole ring, that dark, dark ring and the, the elites that, you know, the freaking epstein and all that stuff and p diddy all that stuff i bet if you offer them help they wouldn't take it a lot of people mm. that's just what they do but what's society's play in this here's this theory i have you guys you guys know who sydney sweeney is of course can you pull up her picture sydney sweeney she um, just hosted snl you hosted know her from euphoria big on euphoria she's oh, a grown beautiful, woman right yeah, beautiful yeah. but she's a grown woman yeah. but most men know her from Euphoria, where she plays a 15-year-old who's constantly having sex and doing all these things. Yeah. How fair is it to like men or women to show someone like this, tell people she's a 15-year-old, you're going to get sexually turned on by watching her on Euphoria. Don't you think like psychologically it's kind of affecting the way men it's, look at women? It's called Hollywood, man, and it's never going to... No, I mean, men don't need that to be turned on. That, that woman right there, the way she looks, she looks like a full-grown woman, and everybody knows that in most societies, typically when girls were 15 and built like that, they were already having kids, traditionally. Mm -hmm. It's a very new thing that, 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 that the age is 17 or 18 or whatever it might be, but, but let's... They, 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 they it's know a what they're doing. Creepy, be attractive. That's what I'm saying. Sure, but that's like, it's also forbidden fruit. That's what's called. That's why they call it forbidden fruit. That is nothing new. That's that's a Lolita. That's that whole fucking thing. That's that Hollywood knows what they're doing. They know that 15 year old. That the whole point is she's. That was that entire She's provocative show. beyond right. her years. Yeah. So how how can you guys or anyone? Gorgeous. Watch yeah. her Jesus in euphoria Christ. as a fifteen year old having like sex and not be well, turned on. Because I know she's not actually fifteen. Yeah. I'm That's not the a main moron. Thing. She's you, an actor. You, yeah, you would like to say that, but I'm saying it's kind of pushing the envelope, <laughs> isn't it? That's the whole realize. point. That's what they want. It's not fair. But Hollywood's the biggest 
egre most egregious violator of all things they say they disagree with. Yeah. What Hollywood doesn't. So everybody's it for gun control in Hollywood. Matrix. Nobody's nobody makes guns more romantic than Hollywood. What Correct. are we talking about? They, people are they're 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 about me too, and they're about stopping like exploitation. Nobody's been more exploitive of women, and for that matter, young boys. They, think young about it. They capitalize on everything. On every Holly school, weird. mass shootings, all serial of, killers, all of it, pedophiles. But that's going to happen when you tell story. Mm -hmm. Story is there to the good story is there to disturb, shake you. But they're up, also doing it because they know there's a, a base to watch it. There's well, there's also a massive good, fan base. Or if you tell good stories, there are certain psychic structures your story is going to resonate with too. So violence is fun to watch, especially if it's a good guy killing a bad guy. It's it's, it's not Hollywood's fault. It's human nature. They yeah, just, there's a reason they're doing it. Yeah, because people are watching. It. Supply and demand, baby. Mm -hmm. But she's she's fucking gorgeous. You've seen her before, right? I know. I have. I, she was so Very good famous. in uh, in uh, White Lotus. So good in that. Mm. She's a good actress. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's a little dime. Yeah, she's a little dime. Let's take a little break, dude. Yeah, can I ask you a question? Sure. Like, w there's something about you, and I don't know if it's that you're way more muscular are you on are you just not eating because you couldn't be you look shredded yeah and you look well you look like you're chesty and armsy but sure. there's no tummy and I i'm know. just wondering why you're popping like that well, it's like it, it's you, the diet it's the working out 4 a.m yeah, yeah. yeah, but sure, then sure, also sure. you know yeah. I, I gotta give credit where it's due yeah go ahead it's the true classic tease dude that's what it is it's the true classic that seemed to hug you where you want to be hugged and hang Arms, loose chest. where you don't yeah oh there it is so it's a little bit of an illusion going on you thought i was john cena yeah it's true classic it's funny because Turns i changing to john cena i would you say it's fair to say that you you're never not without at least one article of true classic on your body every day every day non-stop what 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 are your what's your three-piece set nestled in right now oh the true classic undies yeah once you once you go true They're classic nice. undies and they send me only back. dark yeah only dark, they know the baby. deal only dark they That's got the joggers crazy. they got crew necks they got hoodies button-ups i always rock the white tees but you can get variety packs the three packs i love the gray the black you knew long cut short cut they i got, got the long it cut all right now that's the, the best long cut. and i and it's only I brand my, we wear well i did my shows in vancouver and i got the pictures and i might i look like i've been benching and I love that. Which is insane. Which is insane. If True Classic can make me look like I have a chest, just think what I can do for you. For a limited time only, you guys can get 25% off when you shop right now with the exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash fighter. Mm -hmm. All their shirts are made to make sure you got the eyes in the right spot. It accentuates where the eyes go first. Trueclassic.com uh, slash fighter. Uh, upgrade your closet right now. 25% off your first order. All right, so there it is, trueclassic.com slash fighter. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now. Go to trueclassic.com slash fighter. Save up to 25% off your first order. Support the show. Tell them we sent you. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. That's trueclassic.com slash fighter. Next. <laughs> how, about, how about your boy? We're not even current events, but I'm sure this is one, but P. Diddy. They say he's the, basically the Jeffrey Epstein to music but he's not a pedophile right we don't sex know trafficking. sex trafficking what does that mean sex trafficking so th that's a great point that can literally mean something as simple as i you met a girl here and you flew her out here or you're actually heavily trafficking bringing women in to have sex with other people so that's you oh, know so you're paying women to come in and have sex so you're paying so 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 if over you, state if, lines so if you pay for a hooker to come from vegas to Miami or to Los Angeles, you are you are then um, you're sex, sex trafficking. trafficking? Yes. That's hilarious because that's the entire escort business. That you know how many rich men pay to have the, every girl on every girl's Instagram. I got news for everybody. Every yeah, powerful man in. in Hollywood or in the world does this all the time. Are we sure that's the rule, though, Jen? I, it, 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 I don't think so. We're going to sound really stupid if we assume sex trafficking is flying a girl in it. and having sex with her yeah. across state lines. I think it is. I think it has to be against their will. The actual practice of illegally transporting people from one country or area to another. So if it's illegally? For the of sexual exploitation. So sex exploitation isn't flying an Instagram girl to Miami from LA. Yeah, it is. You no, can not, say it it's is. It's not though. illegal. It's not illegal. That specifically says illegally. I think it is illegal, Bubba. No, it's the not. Because the Constitution's illegal. Well, this no. is from Homeland Security. I'll just click on the entire link. Oh. Let's see. So, 
A human trafficking involves the f use of force, fraud, or coercion. So you're lying to coercion them. Coercion to obtain some. So now you're into what is coercion. Uh, I was tired, I was drunk, I was high. Millions of men, women, and children are trafficked worldwide. Uh-huh. Including right here in the United States. It can happen in any community. Any victim can be of any age, blah, blah, blah. Violence, manipulation, manipulation. Huge one. I'm going to pay you this. You're going to have a great time. All that. False promises of well-paying jobs. Uh, romantic relationships. <laughs> You, that's you, just too vague then, yeah. That, that's what that, this, this is what I'm saying. Let me, tell, let me say it again. If you pay for a hooker, if a girl is for sale, if she is advertising herself and she says, pay me $1,000 and you can have sex with me in LA, but I live in Vegas, you are guilty of sex trafficking. Uh, and that's what it is. Hmm. So uh, okay. if you don't think, if you think he's the only powerful man with money doing that, that's hilarious and adorable. It's called. Uh, I want to be sex very game. clear. We don't know all the facts on P Diddy. Right. Um, we don't know all the facts. So I'm not defending human, him. You are. Uh, you, no, you I'm not. The human trafficking. I'm talking about. I'm saying so. Human trafficking. We're is going very on a weird term. tangent here. I agree. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to P Diddy and talking about underage girls, that's a different and, subject. And that's what we're talking about. Okay. So just be very clear. We're not defend P Diddy and his actions. No. We don't know enough. No. But when it comes to sex trafficking part of it, and then the feds raiding both of his houses. And this has been going on for a hot second. They, there's something going on. There's something going. The feds aren't just going to do it on a whim, you know. Right. They're saying he has, you know. If the this feds whole are doing Ep this, there's something Ep going Epstein on. Epstein thing, where, and when you think of Jeffrey Epstein, you know, what, how, whatever you think of the, the trafficking, but also he would get influential people have them do, you know, these crazy sex acts, get on film, then have blackmail against them. That's what P Diddy's being accused of. So he has, you know, they think. Everybody in the music industry, he'd have these wild parties and he'd film everything. I'm sure. So that's his relationship to Jeffrey. Oh, I'm sure he did. I'm sure that there was. They got. And then you weird. go. Then you go. You can go down the rabbit holes with the Jay Z connection. And then Kanye West has been warning people for a hot second about P Diddy. I'm so sure. has Fifty Cent. Yeah. People don't like him. Like P Diddy. Yeah. There's a lot of the people that um, th th there there have been forever. I I. Oh, I don't know. Let me see. 25 years ago, more than that, I heard f uh, th there was a guy named Hype Williams. Hype Williams used to direct all the all the videos that P. Diddy was producing, okay, yeah, in New York major, City. Yeah, major director. And then out of nowhere, P. Diddy put his name on all those videos. A very good friend of mine worked on those videos with Hype Williams, many of them. And he saw him at a party, and he, she, go, she goes, what the fuck is going on? Why is your name not on that? You directed that. Diddy was just walking around with a microphone, with a megaphone saying dumb shit. Yeah. And then Hype said, I can't talk about it, man. I can't, I can't, I can't even deal. Now, that was way before any of this. To me, when I see that, when I see that you're being a scumbag that way, I go, all right. That, mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. if you're a scumbag in one area, you're a scumbag in a lot of areas. Yeah, he had some like bully tactics and stuff. You can see really bad people are really bad people across the board. There's a, they're, they're, they don't have a lot of friends. They're, 50 Cent never liked him. You said, you said Kanye West was going bad on him too? He was warning. He didn't go bad. He was just warning people. Yeah. And so were a lot of other people. So the story is he got wind that the feds were going to raid his house, gets on his private jet, flies to Miami, and then from there was going to go to like another island, but the feds caught him in Miami at the airport and stopped him. And then he was with a 25-year-old kid who used to be like a Syracuse basketball player that's apparently his drug mule. Yeah, he got caught with a bunch of drugs. And that kid currently is arrested. Now, Diddy is not arrested. Free man walking around right now. But his... God, the level of stress Diddy has waking uh, up this morning. He probably didn't sleep. I mean, your life is, I mean, gun, uh, yeah. gunsos. He, what is he, 53? Great run, great music run. wise. Great run, did everything he can, but you don't get away with that though. Party's but over. My, my guess is he's been he's been getting weird, mm. right? Dr flying in, it's sex parties, drugs, sex, and getting weird. That's and then I saw I saw an old interview with Usher, who was really close to P Diddy, and uh, uh, Stern. It was on Stern. Stern asked, and this is I don't know, fifteen years ago at least. And Stern asks uh, Usher, he goes, would you have kids? Would you allow your kids to go? Because P. Diddy has kids like Bieber and these young kids. And Usher was young when he met him. And he goes, would you allow your, you have children. Would you allow your kids to go to a P. Diddy party? And he was like, 
Absolutely not. Who said that? Usher. Usher? He's like, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Can you look at it? elaborate on it. He's like, the same as sex trafficking. That'll, that'll cry. That's interesting. Yeah, but again, again, so so this is, you hear he's this He's notoriously known people. for his parties, you know, like everyone talks about him. Yeah. Yeah. And then Justin Bieber lived with him for a while. If you had to guess, what would you, when it involves two consenting adults, the fact that it's a business transaction and money is exchanged between them makes prostitution illegal. Human trafficking is more of a serious category of a sex, sex crime. crime. As it forces, as it forces, and forces, and forces women and children engaged in these activities. Against, against their, their will. will. That's the key. Against their will. Yeah. Prostitution wouldn't be against their will. Yeah, yeah, but if you, f but there is the Man Act, which is if you transport somebody over state lines for sex, you're, that's trouble, right? It's called the Man Act. The recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, obtaining, pat patronizing, or solicitation, soliciting of a person for the purpose of commercial sex act. There it all. There it is. It involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion. Yeah, man. That's that's a you get the, somebody makes the right claim and they're looking for money. You're you're in some you're in some. Yeah, I don't think that's what this is. <laughs> so you guys, we don't know. We're, we're, I'm sure this episode's gonna get flagged. So, so, since we're talking about Why? it though, have, do you guys flagged. know about any girls that you know personally that have done that sex for money? Because uh, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone there. does. Hey, it's so I, but they're it's like so cool. I've been living they're in LA cool for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. I've been here 15 And with years. rich dudes, they're like, dude, they're, he's flying me here, doing no, this I, and that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I know somehow that, that's how they make their living. It's called sugar daddies, man. I don't know if it's sugar daddy anymore. It's just like, that's the, her gig. It's his oldest like, That's time. what she does. Yeah. There's a website for it. I mean, sugar there are babies. plenty of websites. Yeah. But I know someone that's actually like a. <laughs> Sure. She's doing well in life, but she just met this rich dude that just would fly her and you know yeah. pay for all. This you know, old, you know. Old, let, let me let me make this clear. Yeah. There's no such thing as a free trip to Hawaii. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay? No, you're paying for it. You're paying for it. You gotta hang out that old dude and do some straight yeah. stuff for no, that no, no, sex, pineapple. Yeah. It's sex. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But but I'm saying like I actually, knows, know, I actually know someone personally who's doing pretty well in life, like yep. decent job and everything, but offered money, did it. Sure, and she has no problems with it. No, no, she's very like, yeah. she's like, yeah. no, it's very common. Yeah. I, th I think it's more common than people think. Hundred yeah. um, percent. Uh, yeah, but it, like the old guys doing that, it's like, all what right. do you think? How do you it's think a, this ends up with uh, P Diddy? Jail. Jeez. Um, I do you know things we don't know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got your you got your ear to the old grindstone there. Yeah. Or the to the all to the floor. To the yeah, ground, and you know me, I'm a street. I'm a chatty Kathy, but ear to the street. Yeah, when you're messing with this stuff, I don't want to talk about. it. But you know some shit. Mm, yeah. Okay. What's your we'll what's your what do you feel is the? I don't know. Like the, there's so much going on with it, and it, it, it's a long time coming. Mm -hmm. no so it, it it's gonna uh, it could get <laughs> rough for them, depending on what they find. You know, it could, could get, get really rough. rough. Okay. And, it, and then the, it could, this could be just the start, and then there could be some other big names going down as well. Damn. Yeah, like huge names. Damn. It, it, it runs deep. So there are a lot people of people in Hollywood not, not sleeping well. No. Yeah. No. The one thing that I will say at 57, everybody. Because think about it. For P. Diddy, he's, what do you say, 53? 54. Yeah. So they come to you, and they go, here's the deal. You're going to prison for the rest of your life unless, unless you give up some other names. You're giving up some. Other You're names. giving up some names. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly you realize, oh, there are no friends. Here. Yeah. Uh, here's what I have to say: as I am at 57, everybody, you're, you're going to look around at people and you're going to say, "Man, that guy's got a great life. That guy, I wish I had that. That what that guy has: great house, great view, great boats, great women, great everything." And then just please know, please know that there are so many people living a life that seems amazing on the surface. And they seem like great people in every way. And there is a whole hidden world. There's a whole hidden side to them. And part of what gets them to where they are, in some cases, not in all, but in some cases, when you see somebody who's super successful, like you say, you don't necessarily want to meet your heroes. When you see them and no. you meet them, you go, ooh, you are a straight up killer. In and right also, there. but P. Diddy's not, we've done, been doing this podcast over 12 years. P. Diddy's not jumping on a pod twice a week for whatever two hours talking about things like we really don't know him that well no so it's like when i see it i wasn't like oh my god it's like yeah, i guess he's a bad dude i don't know right
I know I saw him in his on the TRL years ago. That's about it. Yeah. They had that reality show that was lit on MTV. <laughs> We'd make him walk to get like cheesecake at two in the morning. So there are some people. There's some people. I don't know. Yeah. There, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm not like this is insane. I was like, oh yeah. So this is my impression of some very powerful people in Hollywood. <laughs> no, they're not sleeping. They're tossing and turning. Yeah, or not uh, sleeping uh, at all. Yeah. Yeah, man. Tough. Yeah, we'll see what comes of it. Who knows? Well, when the feds get involved, if the feds show up with masks on and gloves and guns, you know, and, and when you see those those hardcore feds, <laughs> those dudes who just, they just, they smell like gun metal and fucking rawhide. you just like... You know, mustaches, just those fucking rough kind of guys who've been enforcing the law for a long get time. Weird. And then on the local uh, L.A. news, obviously the majority of the audience don't live in L.A. On the local L.A. news, you know, they're interviewing Diddy's neighbors. And there's like these young kids and these fucking kids, you know, they just want to be on there. Like, yeah, I knew something was up. He always has these parties and there's like girls outside. I always thought to myself, what is he doing? Uh, I knew something was wrong with uh, this. It's boy. like. Uh, yeah, did you? Yeah. Did you kid? Like two, or like, did you want to be at those parties? You know, so they're just badly? like two like rich because it's Bel Air. So they're like filthy rich kids uh, just yeah. want to get on camera. Yeah. I like, saw the video too. He's, there, he was in a Bentley. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, he has these like young kids over all the time partying, this and that. Oh, there's another guy though. There's another a, one? I saw that one. Then there's yeah. another guy who walked up. was like, yeah, I live next door. That's the media circus. Yeah. Yeah. I well, don't know, man. It's going to get weird. Yeah. It's going to get weird. We'll see what comes of it. She was. All right. What else you got? All right. Sanaz has something for you. Okay. So Easter is Sunday, I believe. It's Sunday. Is see, it? I, I don't I'm know. terrible. Well, it is. Um, I'm a terrible it's actually Catholic. The, like first time in like 400 years it's been in this month. But I wanted you guys to try these. They went viral on the internet. They are Peeps, you know, the traditional. I love Peeps. But they're Dr. Pepper flavor. Okay. Well, let's okay. Try it. Two of my favorite things on this planet. Wow. Let's try it. You know, I could do anything for uh, Easter? Sure. It's the, door, it's the day the Lord uh, rose, right? Let it, let it hit your palate. Come on. I don't taste Dr. Pepper. I do. I do. How do you not taste Dr. Pepper? They're Dr. Pepper flavored. I know. Have you had a regular peep? One time you had a regular peep. I don't, never. Yeah. Well, so you don't know what to compare it to. No, but that tastes like Dr. Pepper. It does. I don't taste Dr. Pepper. They're so good. Maybe my palate's off. Maybe you have COVID. Nah. Those are all natural. <laughs> are these uh, organic? We nice. do it. We, yeah, we don't do on Easter. We'll hide eggs for the kids. They go nuts over it. That's about it. Do you guys do anything, B? Uh, for Easter? Mm -hmm. uh, last time I can remember, I took my kids to an Easter egg hunt when they were little. Okay. Yeah. We had them around the house. And I was talking to Tay Diggs. Cool guy. Tay Diggs. It was a while ago. Yeah, huh? Old school. There. Yeah, my kids were real little. Guys, listen. You're not ready for an emergency, and there's a way to be ready. Most people, please understand, you are your first responder. Nobody's coming. If you get in a, a life and death situation, it's very likely you are the one who's going to have to save your own life or, or your loved one's and life. And the world's crazy right now. Things happen. You want to be prepared. You watch the news. Fieldcraft Survival, there's an app called Fieldcraft Survival App. Okay? It's fantastic. Their, their mission is to prepare every citizen to become prepared to survive the worst case scenario. All right? They've got live training gear. They live training. They got gear. They got online education. All these things. It's long. They've got long form digital educational content. To get you ready to survive the worst case scenario. Hopefully it never happens, but if it do, you'll want to be ready. That's right, man. Dude, use code FIGHTER20. If it do, Fight tw go fighter 20 20% 20 off your training and product at fieldcraftsurvival.com go to fieldcraftsurvival.com fighter 20 for 20% off I'm telling you right now it is irresponsible not to at least just prepare yourself a little bit it can make the huge difference they've got jujitsu they got combatives they got self-defense stuff they've got all kinds of stuff Sur uh, survival disaster prep medical and trauma training so much more yep fieldcraftsurvival.com promo code fighter 20 for 20 percent off i don't like uh like we were at the mall last weekend and the east bunny was already out my girl's like oh she weighed in line I'm like hell no like 
I just don't Wayne trust those line. guys. I just don't. Well, a way in line. B. I also don't trust the grown man in that suit, having a little <laughs> kid sit on his leg. I don't like my kid. I don't like my kids doing mm. the Santa Claus thing, mm. the Easter Bunny. Yeah. Especially the Easter Bunny. That thing creeps me out. Yeah. Because you know that guy came to Hollywood to be the next Leonardo DiCaprio. Didn't go well. <laughs> now he's at the Topanga Mall so I dressed in this Easter Bunny <laughs> outfit with kids sitting on his Naples, lap. Naples, California. And they also don't ask for anything. Like, Na- what are they talking about? Naples, California. Uh, I think Eric Virginia uh, over at, you know, he said, the Naples, Santa Florida. Claus, the Santa Claus, you'll never believe what they're. So my, my son was going to sit on Santa Claus' lap. He was like one. He said, you'll never believe what Santa Claus does when he's not Santa Claus. Well, he goes, he is a mortician. No. <laughs> yeah, and he prepares the bodies for uh or no, he does the he's an au- he does the autopsies. I'm sorry, for the state. Uh. So he so someone's murdered, he'll so go he'll in the body. Do, he takes your body apart and all that. So he's he works with dead bodies all day, right? And and you're like, well, creepy, right? But he's he my little son is a little bit of a ginger. And I remember he said to me, he goes, uh, do me a favor, just cover your child's head because the sun is really strong in Florida, and you're not from here. And he was so concerned about him. He goes, and this did the head. The, what you don't know is that the skin over the skull is as thin as a piece of paper. And he was explaining how. And this is a guy who really knows, but he didn't know <laughs> that I. Knew, he didn't know that I knew that he knew. So I'm like, I'm like, thank you very much. He goes, and you have to send him to the hospital because he's got a got his skin in the sun. You, it'll be too late. So please cover his head. And he was so concerned with my little baby that he just wanted to protect him. And I was like, what a nice guy. And maybe. Mm-hmm. Even that would weird me out. Like, okay. It was a little, yeah, but but I, I could tell he was actually a good man. But he's From Claus. that? Yeah. And you think P. Diddy's a bad guy? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know shit it's about weird, that right? guy. Yeah, that's weird, it's, dude. So the, sc- the, You're the skin. You're too trustworthy. The skin over your. No, f- the, the, your the skin fact's is, not weird. Yeah. Yeah, of course it's fucking thin up there. Very Thanks, thin. Doc. I know this. What's weird Very is you assume he's a good guy. Well, he was taking care you of my son. You met him once. Taking care of my son. He didn't want my son's head to burn. No, he wanted to hang out after. <laughs> get some drinks. <laughs> no, Bob. Talk about the Easter Bunny. No, man. I don't think so. Oh, you're the problem. What? You're the problem. Oh, Am you, I naive? Yeah, you can take my son. I dropped him off at the kid yeah, camp. I, I dropped him off at Santa him. camp. It was just one. It was only four hours. Yeah. Santa camp, Claus camp. Give me something else. No, I'm on high alert all the time. Yeah. I don't trust any of that shit. Mm-mm. You can't. As a dad, you can't. My kid yeah. doesn't give you sleepovers. Nothing. I remember trusting so many people when I was younger, but now I'm like, if I had kids, I wouldn't, it sucks to say, but if I had like a male, if if a babysitter was male, I would just never, oh, fuck that. I would never allow it. That's a red flag from the jump. I didn't know that. I was, when I was younger, I was like, oh, let anyone, yeah, everyone's, everyone's so nice. And everyone's That's so, what happens. You get they older, you realize your child's all this shit. likely more likely to get abused by someone they know. And so, you oh, know. dude, I know. Not strangers. I know. Yeah. You got, you got, you got abused. No, no, no. A few of my exes, they told me stories yeah, about yeah. yeah, family members. All right, let's move yeah. on. Yeah, All right, like so this is a really dark Ooh. episode. Oh, I thought this was super cool. So Dana White was talking to Lex Friedman on his podcast and said that uh, in 2022, especially with the COVID thing and also uh, the N-word stuff that popped up with Joe Rogan, you know, in context, Joe Rogan was saying the N-word, you know, but it, it became a thing. They tried canceling him. Yeah. And then I guess there was a possibility of him getting fired. So Dana White said he would resign from the UFC. Wow. So here's how this went down. If that happened. I know for these details. This is how it went down. So this is why, this is why I was like, oh, I'll never go bad on Dana again. Once I saw this, mm-hmm. but you'll never hear me say something bad about Dana. I always kind of defend him now. So what happened is it wasn't that Dana called the head of ESPN and was like, hey, if Rogan doesn't work, I quit. At the time, is uh, Bob Iger, whoever is the head of Disney that owns ESPN, called dana and was like yo man we brogan can't work like he, we we, we got to do something all this stuff coming out and dana to bob Iger, i think his name's bob Iger, the head of disney dana went yeah if you pull him from the card i quit and the guy was like whoa hold on let's figure this out so that's how gangster dana i love is. dana for that yes. i love dana yeah me too he can do no wrong I love dana white yeah that. i love him for that we need more loyal people like that. That's earth. incredible. And apparently, uh, and by the way, he's right. If you're with me, you're with me. He's had the same people working mm-hmm. for him for a long time. He never laid yeah his staff off during COVID and stuff. Wow. But I guess Lex Friedman was with Rogan when Dana called him to say that too. That that's what it was. So it was Lex saying that, and mm-hmm. then yeah, 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 it's gangster, super wow. gangster, and super cool. <clears throat> I'm glad that. that story came out. I was wish that was more. Tell? I wish that was more common. I wish that was uh, this is another one with Dana. So 
apparently he was this is a, a while back he was at the rio and he was gambling and you know when you gamble in vegas they give you drinks for free all yeah. that stuff so apparently he was drinking and gambling and realized okay he thought he lost 80 grand so he went to bed next day the host called him saying like you're gonna stay in the hotel still or whatnot and he's like no no i'm gonna get my 80 grand back he goes and then there was like a silence and apparently it was not 80 grand it was three million <laughs> <laughs> so, three million. so since that day he said he stopped drinking when he gambles and all that stuff and obviously yeah. he made like a ton of money before like, like yeah, i think he made like seven million money. gambling yeah. or six yeah. that is a lot of money yeah all he right. got kicked out of one of the casinos because he made yeah, so much he made money. So much money yeah. uh i think we have otani on there speaking Wait, the real quick we'll get we'll get yeah. to that but brendan also posted about this love this uh so mighty mouse Watch he this. beat a 250 pound brown, what, belt. brown belt yeah yeah and that's and it was like a row and bow do you know that Bren? the 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 actual chokes out yeah row, row and bow yeah, or something where, where, yeah where you, you're pulling like this how do you yeah, do yeah. That? like he rolled under him no oh, well, you you used a lapel okay. it's like a bow and arrow choke i'll just show you real quick so you can see it so he won uh his division and this is the absolute division so in the absolute division weight classes don't matter so he won his division his weight class and then well, you get to the absolute, open division afterwards you get to the absolute where the anybody the best of the best of the division so for him to win that's what so what right here this is where it happens i don't even know how he grabs the lapel so he's hanging on the lapel and then pulling yeah so he's using the the lapel to do the Dude, choke on the neck like he's and brendan <laughs> predicted <laughs> predicted that he could beat someone of yeah, like bradley, you know bradley martin size that would happen when i went on bradley and he caught me off guard <clears throat> bradley's like i could beat up anybody under i forget which weight and i was like, god not mighty mouse mm. and this clip is great do you want to play it is it cool go ahead bradley comment 260 is just now, different demetrius johnson who fights at 125 in a street fight with do you want why demetrius johnson he's tiny but he's black on everything when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. I'm gonna crush his head on the floor. No. no? Mm -hmm. 125 pounds? I, Demetrius Johnson. Or so Demetrius Johnson, I know. I can lift that with one hand. I know. I'm not saying he's gonna get back. Roll that. He's gonna get your neck, he's gonna get your ankles. You're talking about like the best of all time. Okay. You, you wouldn't be able to touch him. I wanna find this guy you're talking about. DJ? I wanna find him. Yeah. I wanna just lay on top of him in jujitsu. So 150 pounds. <laughs> it wouldn't be good for him. It wouldn't be good. No problem. He, but he didn't know who Mighty Mass was. He didn't know who D Demetrius Johnson was. I was like, oh, dude, you got to educate yourself on that. But Bradley's great. He just trolls everyone. He's like, I'm 260. 260 that is guy just was different. 250. And he I goes, 260 just I different. love Bradley. Yeah, I love 260 Bradley. 260 is just different. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you got to love Bradley Martin. I fucking love that guy. Oh, this Otani stuff is. So. Yeah. Intense. A lot of people are thinking that the interpreter is the fall guy. Wait, in this but one. educate the people what's going on. So Otani, it came out originally in the news here in LA. Otani's translator got busted for betting on baseball. The more details mm -hmm. that came out was that he took $4 million from Otani's bank account to pay off his debt. Well, the MLB opened investigation, and so they're doing their thing, but the rumors are that the translator is just, he's the scapegoat. Okay. He's the fall guy. How would he get that four million from his bank account? How, how uh, do you have access to it? Yeah, bank all this, account? cool, get it. Here's what's gonna happen. The MLB is gonna do their investigation. Uh, and Otani, be, who's worth billions of dollars to the MLB, is the, do is the face of the MLB, go, yeah, it was, the, it was that guy. Otani was right. Yep. You think they're gonna dig in and no. he'd be suspended for life. He'd be Pete Rose. Oh my you think God. they're gonna do that? But also, who gives a fuck? Because here's the, I mean, if he's throwing, you know, games, that's terrible. But it's oh. hilarious to me. You can watch ESPN, any of the March Madness, any NFL game. What commercials on nonstop? Betting, 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 betting. 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 Everything's yeah, right. FanDuel, DraftKings, yep. prize picks, all this stuff. And then they want to shun Otani. So it's. He's yeah. Gonna, you know what's going to come of this? No. Nothing. Zero. Because he's what do you, what do you so think? famous. You think it was Otani who was doing the betting, the, the gambling? If yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, that's I what do. The, that's I, I I've heard from somebody who knows that bookie. The one in Orange County. Yeah. You know what's funny? I heard something from someone yeah. who knows that bookie. Yeah. How are well, you? How are you gonna well, miss four point two million dollars from your bank account? How are you? Correct. How are you not gonna miss that? He has billions. Yeah, you still you still would have to have access to that. Come on. Million. You'd have to have access to that. Four hundred thousand. I could understand. Yeah. But here's my thing. Fine. If you're Otani, like in Japan, and he's massive he's more famous than anybody in america he's so big he has all the money in the world why the fuck why are you betting for because, more money the juice because the juice because, the juice. because oh. gambling is is 
uh, an addiction. It's like everything. So wild to me. Same reason people drink and do things with all that. But those people aren't the best baseball players on earth. Like you're not getting enough juice. Cause no. I mean, you got your work cut out for you. So we were aware of you when you played for the angels, the angels are the WNBA compared to the Dodgers. Right. Dodgers biggest, the Yankees Dodgers. Now you're the face of the Dodgers, yeah. Bubba. You got work to do, right? But and the uh, other dude that they signed for whatever seven hundred million dollars, he's playing terrible. He had a horrible. Well, that's game. the other problem. A lot of times when they sign these massive contracts, it doesn't work out so well, right? It depends who it is. Yeah, a lot of times it does. So. For Otani, I'd imagine it does. Wait, so if Otani's still killing it though, right? Like he's doing really well. He's why, still the man. How would? How is he? throwing like how was this betting because they work? looked into some of the games when he was pitching and he gave up like a ton of runs which is not common for him Damn. but this is before this happened though or after like it was during well he was i hope oh. he's not betting on the games was he betting on baseball or yes just has to be right yeah has to be good. baseball bets like oh, it, it's true. it's based off of whatever Otani does, right? That's what his, I'm guessing his interpreter huge, was betting on. If problem. this is real, I don't know. That's a huge issue. But it would just, it wouldn't make sense. He would be he's still killing it, God, so I don't that's know. That's crazy. That's crazy. Sums up with it. But I'll tell you what's going to come from this. Nothing, because he's the best baseball player of all time. You think the MLB is going to be like, oh, we're going to stick to our guns on this one? Like rules are rules. No, but not with Otani. Anybody else? They're, they're, they're screwed. They're banned for life. Otani? No yeah. way. Yeah. And he just signed in the biggest market in baseball? And they dollars. need views? Yeah. Come on. It would be devastating if they suspended him. What, what, what's up, Sanaz? Um, oh, we, we got another one for you. I hope you guys have strong stomachs. Um, this was an MMA uh, Muay Thai fight. And this guy got rocked in the face. Yeah. And I have the we have, do you have the video? Yeah. I saw this shit. Let's do a three break. Let's see here in slow motion. Oh. oh. Mm. No. Mm. Set his toes. Mm -mm -mm. It's got to suck. I mean, do a three break. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, B. Just kind of like shifted. Yeah, just broke. You've had your nose broken, right? Yeah, shattered. Crow like that? Shattered with the elbow. Uh, I've had it pretty bad, yeah. I win uh, the Ultimate Fighter finale. I ate a knee from Marcus Jones, and my nose was over here. Oh, no. But it, like his is different because it's like all the way over here. My nose was broke like this. Because I remember I won. I knocked him out, and I jumped up, and I was giving Dana a hug. And he's like, calm down, calm down, your nose. And, but I, my drone was so crazy, I didn't know. I'm like, what? He's like, your nose. I was like, oh, shit. Ah. It was like all over here. I think that's what people don't realize. Like, if you're adrenaline, like, you, can get, you can hit somebody square in the nose. And, and keep they're, going? They'll kill you, yeah. Like you can hit him in the nose if you were fighting him. He was fighting you for real and break his nose. Not going to save your life. You no, guys that. break their nose all the time. Not going to save. No, I mean that's terrible. How you. does that not just stop you? you? Don't think about it. It depends how it breaks. Because like Roy McDonald broke his nose in the uh, Carlos Couldn't Condit see. fight, and but it sometimes if it if it goes this way, you know, if the pressure's this way, then the blood it affect your vision. Okay. But I think it's better for it to go this that was, way. He Ugh. took so much damage in that. Ugh. Fight. Like that, yeah. What else? Look, at the end of the day, you get to an age, you need a little, you need a little push up the hill, dude. And I, I feel that, dude. I feel that. And I was, I was driving Ventura yesterday. Did you I'm, stop at the gas station? I stopped at the gas station. No. I, need, I need that E85 gas for my demon. I was like, you know what, help. My libido's been down. My boners aren't firm anymore. No. I'm gonna get this Rhino 10,000. No, 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 bad idea. No, dude, dude, I took it. I've had a boner that for. You got it. Two years. You got, and you, I'm very lightheaded. Joy mode is what you want to do. Joy mode is there for it doesn't have nasty side effects, heart problems. You don't get flushed in a headache. You don't have to go to the hospital to get rid of that thing. It's here to save the day, okay? Listen, at the end of the day, it's a sexual performance booster. It's like a pre-workout, but for sex. What? Right? Yes. So you take protein, It's take a supplement, creatine. dude. It spices things up naturally rather than some prescription drug with harmful side effects down the road. All right, look, this is how they biohack your performance. All right, and you can do that. Why not biohack your performance right into the bedroom? Okay? Joy Moy, and Joey. it's science backed, dude. That's what I was gonna say. It's natural, it's backed by science. Their sexual performance boosters, like a pre workout, like Brian said, but for the bedroom. There it is. It's fantastic. If you want to try it out, 
All right, blood vessel, tissue health, all that stuff, healthy blood pressure, get that firm wiener going. It helps your general erectile function. Today, Junior, want to spice things up in the bedroom and boost your sexual performance and do it naturally without the nasty prescription drugs? We got a special offer for your wiener. Go to usejoymode.com slash fighter, enter the code fighter at checkout for 20% off your first order. That's usejoymode.com slash fighter for 20% off your first order. Order. Thanks, Joy Mode. You said tattoo artist? Yeah. Would love to hear your guys' opinion on this. So there's apparently now a machine that can literally tattoo as good as a human. Is it faster? That part, I don't know. If it's faster, sign me up. Really? Hell yeah. You would I don't, don't want to be there for three hours. If but this you would robot. Trust a machine over a person? Oh, yeah. Tattoo? No mistakes. <laughs> that's, that's the future right there. That's for sure the future. If it's faster, it's I mean, sometimes it's cool to talk to the tattoo artist, especially when they have years and years of experience. They have a certain style. The problem with this is that this, everyone's style is going to be the same. There's going to be no, no, nothing's going to be unique. If a robot's doing something mean, like a Tesla, they all look the same. They all drive the same. There's nothing unique about them. So tattoos are going to become that. That's mm -hmm. what we don't want. That's the problem with robots. The creativity is based off, you know, mm, the AI. Yeah. But if it's, if you can go in there and they knock it out in 20 minutes, I would much rather. I'd be tatted all over my body. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer that anesthesia thing. That remember, like a taiga or, or some other people, they just go under and they do an entire back piece. Oh, that'd be cool. That's you just wake up and you're done, no pain. That'd be cool. I don't want to do that though. I'd rather just knock it out in twenty minutes. Twenty and minutes, get the hell out. Just deal with the pain for twenty minutes. Because tattoo artists, you know, they, you know, how there, you get there, uh, you have a one o'clock appointment. Like, oh, good to see you, man. I'm just gonna write it up for you, and I'll be <laughs> back, y'all. Right. <laughs> and you knew I was coming at one. Yeah, I want you write oh it up God, the night that's before. So, true. That's so, so true. I'm just gonna write it up, man. You know, I'll place it on your arm. So then they write it up whatever you get a tiger. Let's say they draw it and they're like, "You like that?" You're like, "That looks dope." Well, where are you thinking about putting it? You're like, well, "I told you this, but <laughs> you um, I'm gonna put it here." All right, let me see. Do you like that size? Like, again, I thought we went over this, but I would like it a little <laughs> bigger. All right, let me go print this thing. So then they print it and then they put it on your skin. He's like, "All right, let me just set up, man. We'll get you started here." Hour and a half, two hours go by before they start actually doing work. I mean, a ta a small tattoos, you have black out the entire day. Yep. <laughs> Hilarious. Some tattoo artists are better, but yeah, for the majority of well, ones, that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Every it's time. always like when you get in, like, oh, yeah, they just. <laughs> All right, man, let me get started. Around, we, yeah. we, we, let me get started. We, we'll get to it. And then uh, feel free to sit in the lounge. And so we got snacks and drinks. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, eat snacks yeah. or drinks. No, watch TV. <laughs> Let's just knock this out. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. This kid, Dwayne Coleman, broke that. Louisiana high school record with a 900 pound squat. What? Yeah. What? Let a refresher. I wish we had our strong man here today too. What? Oops, sorry. That's insane. Look at this kid. Dude, the bar has to bend at some point. What? He doing it for fun. What are Doesn't you talking? Doesn't even count towards his total. <sighs> oh, that's so fucking nuts. <laughs> Damn, hey, dude. Hey, get the better fucking can. <laughs> I know. Easy. No, he did pretty easy. Probably get a little more. My question is, how much does he weigh? Easy. Whoa! I mean, I don't care how much he weighs. That's crazy. He looks big. That's crazy. Yeah, I wish we knew how much he weighed, though. Man, his body is not the kind of body I'd want, but damn, that's crazy. Yeah, like I'd like height. Four hundred and sixty-two really. pounds. Not that impressive. And he's like small, like shorter too, right? So not four sixty. Still, how tall is so he? So much weight, though. Mm. It's so much weight, Bob. I don't know. Yeah, he does look shorter, though. So yeah, four hundred and sixty-two pounds. Four hundred four hundred sixty pounds. Just made for that. It's a lot of weight. Though. I mean, that's like you squatting. You know, four hundred. Still nine hundred pounds, man. It's so much weight. It's so much weight. Because six the foot. Because the world. There's no. Probably. Really? The world record. Well, six, the world, a lot of that's fat, by the way. But it, well, the world record yeah, no shit. is, uh, what, like 1,100 pounds? So it's kind of pretty amazing. Uh, Being that, that young and, and moving that kind of weight is nuts. Nuts. I think that's a that might be a weight suit, though. Is that a weightlifting oh, yeah. suit? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. 1,080? Yeah. That's incredible. Heaviest drug tested. Uh, 
169. That's where humans cap out at. Wow. Oh, this one's interesting. So Caitlin Clark, uh, she's expected to be the number one draft pick for the WNBA. She's leading Iowa to probably Damn. a championship. She's probably the most famous basketball player on the planet right, right now. now. And really? I mean, like everybody from her, like Barkley her, her, to everyone. Her games get more views than the men's. What? But yes. there's no stars in March Madness. It all everyone leaves. So the women's, like Caitlin Clark, I can't name another one except for the really big girl at Iowa State. But yeah. she just got famous because she's big and good. Hmm. But Caitlin Clark, probably the most famous basketball player right now, especially in college basketball. Zach a day is who? You know, on Zach a day doesn't count. Yeah. So with Caitlin, she's the number one pick. Look up how much the number one M uh, WNBA player gets. I think the highest paid WMA players like three hundred grand a year. Whoa, what? Mm -hmm. What a disparity! And now they I have nobody, endorsements. Why do you think nobody watches the WNBA when they watch like women's tennis a lot? What is it? Two hundred forty-two thousand is the highest. Crazy. So, but then look at the offers. This is yeah. the the current event. She got an offer from Five Dave million. Portnoy to play in the intramural league for ten million, and then she got another offer from the Big Three Ice Cube for three million a year. Damn. So she's Five. that good. Five million for oh. ten appearances. How tall is she? Don't know that one. Oh, oh, hey. Super tall. Or? Who cares, right? But think about <laughs> hey, that. Five appearances and uh, ten appearances. Right. Hey, hold on. Let me go. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I'm just. I just thought maybe. <laughs> hey, five eleven. But I, <laughs> now what? I just thought I'd take. Where do you want to go with it? I thought I'd take an interest in female sports. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Six, Six feet. feet. Fantastic. I mean, what are we gonna do with that? I, I don't know. I figured she'd be a lot taller to be that good. No, man. She's, I mean, the best ever yeah. in, in college basketball. Okay. Best ever. But I wonder if she, yeah, it's, it's, because just off her NIL deal, she's making millions. She's making more in college than she would in the WNBA. But I assume like Nike's wow. going to throw a bag at her, like 20 mil, 30 Damn. mil. So that's, she could, and WNBA is where she wants to make her career, obviously. The big three is. It is what it, it's kind of a joke. So she's not going to go there. But they're saying they'll do it in a way where it won't conflict she can do both. with her schedule. She can do yeah. both. Yeah, but then the argument is, will the WNBA allow it? It'd be good for the WNBA. It'd be great for Builds the WNBA. Builds her star. Builds her star. She might not need it, though. Because if, if these people know the value. So if they're throwing five, ten, three million at her, Nike's going to sign her to, she's such a big deal. Who knows? 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars. Where she's like, no, I'm not going to go do the big three on fucking Fox Sports Caitlin on Fox. a Saturday afternoon, playing against some old ass that NBA. Nobody player. watches. It'd be some it, people it, do though. Sometimes it's intriguing. They, they, it's not. They, 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 you don't want to see her play Allen Iverson. If people were watching it, you'd be making a lot more money. I'm talking about the WNBA. Yeah. Well, oh no. You're, so you're talking about two different things. WNBA. You're talking about two different things. Oh. So she's talking about her playing the big three. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and you're talking about that's WNBA. Got, that seems to have legs. Even she's not going to bring right. viewership WNBA. Right. I think it ought to go a tad higher, but yeah. I think it could be good for her to do some sort of cross-pollination thing. You know, I would be more intrigued to watch her in a big three game than a All day. WNBA Me game. too. Right. All day. And, but Ice Cube knows this. Dave Portnoy knows this. There's a reason they're going for her. I, I just think she's going to get such a big endorsement deal from Nike or Adidas or whoever not, out there where she won't need to do it. My she's guess like, is no. three, big three is three out of three. Yeah. 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 They have four point shots. I'm out. I told Mike, Michael Rapport to his face that. Oh, they have four point shot? He goes, yeah, I, went, I won't watch it. The rap. Hmm. Well. I went to one. Oh, yeah? I went to a big three in uh, Vegas. Yeah. Uh, Kanye West asked the music industry to strictly yeah. refer to him as Ye. Cool. Yes. Ye. Yi. Not Ye, but Yi? Yeah, Yi. That's my name. Yes. Chen Yi. Do you want, can you and a take a look at this, yes. the letter that they put out? Oh, this letter. Oh. Can somebody read so <laughs> yeah. audio listeners? This is his chief of staff. Okay. Nobody's reading. So Yi is one of the most recognizable people in the world on par with presidents and popes. Jesus Christ, that's intense. He didn't take the decision to change his name, potentially sacrificing some of his the immense value captured by the brand Kanye West lightly. The change was made fully, legally, and forever, basically. This is who he is now. His May name I, is Yi. You would know this better. May I ask a question? Has he weathered the anti-Semitism and all the stuff? Is, it, is that just kind of a memory now? No. 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 Okay. 
I but the thing is, it's like his album's number one. So I, but he can't tour. He can't tour. That's where they make all their money. Why can he now not? he's a billionaire, so I don't think he really but cares. Why? Stadiums don't want him. They want. They won't have him. No. Who, who do you think owns all those places? Hmm. A lot of Jews saying. or people that have friends who are Jewish, and you know. They, so, they, they're in their union, like they're not gonna. So he won't let him play at stadiums, he, he arenas. Ain't playing at stadiums. No, no. Wow. He might. He can play internationally, I think, but I don't. Yeah, but he it, can but, play in Palestine and. Play but that's some of the. <laughs> <laughs> he can play in certain parts. I bet. I guarantee. The he can Red play Sea in Saudi Palestine. Arabia. Yeah. Yeah, if that's what you want to do, you know. But again, he has so much money. But uh, as far as like, is it just a thing? No, man. That's yeah. still heavy, heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there is coming back from that. All right. He has his fans. People love him. Yeah. But. Do you want to do this one? Or no? Oh, yeah. You guys, LA's getting weirder and weirder. Oh, no. my God. I saw you this. See this? No. This guy's got arrested because he's walking down the street munching on a human leg. Some dude gets hit by a bus. His leg falls off. Or this a train or something. Train think, something. Yeah. This guy picks up the leg and they find him eating it. <sighs> so I'll. Obviously not played leg? for the audience. But. No, man. Hey, what the fuck his own leg? Bro. I want to hit you, dude. <laughs> he was eating another leg? Listen to what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> a guy got hit by a goddamn train. His leg fell off. This homeless guy picked it up and he's eating it like a goddamn zombie apocalypse. I don't know how to make sense of anything anymore. That guy's not doing well. That's a leg? Yeah, uh, that's why it's blurred out. He's eating a leg. He's eating a human leg. Yeah. I brought this up to my brother the other night, and he said, like, there's this new drug out right now that, like, causes people to, to like... eat people? Yeah. Like, yeah. I Say I, no to drugs. If you have any questions, just say no to drugs generally, guys, because you don't want to end up eating a leg. You know how they talk about rock bottom? It's like, what happened? How'd you get... <laughs> what happened when you got sober? I got caught eating a human leg that had been severed. It was a fresh leg, to be fair to me. No, there's, like there's rock bottom, but there's even wiggle room at rock bottom. There's that's either, like... Yeah. That's beyond He was already bottom. a rock bottom. Yeah, you're in you hell get, right when now. When you get caught eating a leg? <sighs> yeah. When hey, man. Oh, now, that we was gotta a have a conversation. Leg. It just got severed, and I was hungry. Taking bites out of a leg. Dude, that kid, By the way, that, on the street and bent over. Not even bringing it up. He had. He was all the way bent over. He was biting it, like, upside down. Ugh. That, that's even worse. Like, just at least bring it to your mouth and... and, and I don't think it matters. I think that's... Too much? It's all in the details. Okay. But the thing, that guy has parents. And so the parents yeah. are whatever at Sunday church and they get done like, how's Jeff doing? Yeah, he's, he's been tough lately. Really? I thought he, I thought he went to rehab. I thought he was, yeah. Yeah, they caught he, him. He, you know what? He, he's falling a little bit of hard times. Yeah. He had a rough one the other day. What happened? They caught him eating a human leg. Yeah, but it was, it was, <laughs> what? what happened was this train hit his friend. And then his no, friend, he didn't kill. Here's the good news: he didn't kill he didn't anybody. Kill him. The train he saw the, the leg guy, fall the off. Leg, his friend, they were hanging out on the tracks, which they, he hangs out on the tracks. A to lot. be fair, he's coming off a 72-hour water fast. He was coming off a 72-hour <laughs> water fast, and he's on the carnivore diet, so that was it. And he knew his friend, so it's not the same. And he thing. didn't want to go to waste. Yeah. So he was, and he wasn't he, wolfing it down. He was taking ginger bites. He was gingerly nibbling. And last time I talked to him, leg. I said he didn't enjoy it. Right. And he said, "I just want to see what human flesh tastes like." And then he told me it tastes just like pork. So that's the story, guys. Bro, how about that's only a misdemeanor? That nah, well, yes, <sighs> it's it's mishandling of a human corpse. So there you go, misdemeanor of eating a, a body. Now you're not going to have a good. Oh it's going to be hard getting a job. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> Let's do a background check on that guy. Well, it's the guy they I think found on the, the side least of the road. Of his worries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good thing to end on. No, and yeah. me, I'd hire him at Thick Boy. Yeah, like ah, it's yeah. all right, man. <laughs> Seems like a nice guys. Guy. Uh, Can you guess what, media? everybody? Brea Improv, April nineteenth and twenty. Come see me, Brea Improv, and then Bricktown Comedy Club, April twenty sixth, twenty seventh. I'll see you there. Let's rock and roll. That baby's Brian coming Cal. soon. That baby's coming soon, and I'm delivering it. Yeah. God willing. We're out.